Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Today we're going to build some storage units. There's a bookcase, there's a two-door storage cabinet, there's even a three-drawer bureau. That's next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Hi, fellas. I'd like you to meet my friends Nicholas, Gray, and Reed. And they're playing here in their room with our modular furniture. I think one of you guys could show me what you're keeping up in the top drawer of the dresser. Yeah, Reed's going to show us. Ah, the clothes, huh? Now, how about the unit with yeah, the doors in it? Yeah, clothes. Yeah, you can check it out. Oh. How about in there? Uh, ah. Clothes right there. Yeah. And people and trucks and backhoes and fences. Wow. And up top, you got a computer game and your books and your fire trucks and a big dump truck way on the top. Well, one of the tests of a piece of furniture like this is how well the kids can enjoy it. And as you can see, this is being very well used. It was a lot of fun to build, and I'll show you how. When I built this prototype, everyone who came through the shop said, students' furniture? This is much too good for a student. Well, let's just say this is for the deserving student. And if you don't want to give it to the student, maybe you'll just keep it for yourself. So if you'd like to build these units, a measured drawing is available with a materials list. And you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Before we start today, I want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now you might have noticed that the units are made from plywood, but it's not just ordinary plywood. This is a high quality red oak veneer plywood. It's an AA grade, which means both sides are good. Now it's not inexpensive, but it's a lot easier than gluing up a whole bunch of oak boards. It's very stable, and there's not very much waste. Now handling plywood in the workshop alone is not easy, so I've done a couple things that help. First, I set my workbench so that it's not more than eight feet from the saw so that I can rest the piece as I set it all up. Now, I do have an outfeed table, but that's not enough because the sheet is going to go way out over the end. So I need rollers. These are indispensable. It's like a second set of hands. You can get a regular roller or a ball bearing type. The other critical thing to have is a very sharp blade whenever you cut veneers. This is a 60 tooth carbide tip blade and it's very sharp. The first piece I want to rip is a strip that's wide enough to make the ends and the top of a base unit. Good. Now I'm going to take another sheet and rip a strip just like the one I just did for the draw case base. I'm cutting all these pieces a little bit wider than what the final width needs to be. The next thing to do is cross cut these long narrow pieces and there's no easy way to do that at the table saw. So what I like to do is use a small circular saw cutting the piece a little bit longer than what I need. If it chips it's not going to matter because I'll trim it again. Now I want to return to a ripping operation. No matter how careful I am when I run those long pieces through, sometimes you get a slight variation on the edge. Now that the pieces are smaller, they're easier to handle and I can rip them much more accurately. The first step is to trim just about a sixteenth of an inch off all the pieces. Now I'm ready for the final rip. First I'll set the fence to the final width of each piece. 
and take the edge that I just trued up and set that against the fence and run the pieces through. With the two long sides parallel, I'm ready to trim up the ends. And there's no better tool for that than my homemade panel cutter. I'll square up one end first, measure it for length, and trim the other. Okay, 34 inches. Next, I want to make some dados in the plywood, and they will support the fixed shelves. There's one on the side to receive the fixed shelf of the door unit. There's one for the fixed shelf of the dry unit. And there's one for the lower fixed shelf of the bookcase. While I still have the stacked dado head cutter set up in the table saw, I want to make a rabbit in the bookcase sides to receive the fixed top. The next thing I want to do is make a rabbit along the side panel to receive the quarter inch plywood backs. The door case will get a piece of oak plywood for its back. The drawer case will get Luan because you'll never see it. And of course, the bookcase will get another piece of quarter inch oak. I've turned around the bookcase unit so I can show you what's happening on the rabbits at the back. The lower fixed shelf has a rabbit for the plywood to sit in so it won't show through at the bottom edge. The rabbits along the side pieces are actually stopped rabbits. They end right here so that this won't show on the inside. I'll show you how I made those. For one of the side pieces, I can start at the top and make the rabbit down to this indicator mark, which I'll align with an indicator mark on my fence, which is the leading edge of the dado head cutter. The mark on the side is where the rabbit will intersect the dado. The other side is a mirror image, and I want to run the rabbit from the dado to the top. I'll have to do it a little differently. I'll use this indicator mark, which is the trailing edge of the dado head cutter, align it with my indicator mark on the panel, drop it down, run it through. Wherever the edge of the plywood might show, for instance, around the edge of a drawer, I've concealed it with a piece of solid oak by making a tongue on the plywood and a groove in the solid piece. Where the side panel meets the solid oak of the top, there's also a tongue, but it's across the grain. And I found that cutting that close to the edge often results in chipping unless I score the piece. To score it, I'm just going to use a sharp utility knife and a scrap of the tongue piece that I can just rest on the blank and use as a guide to score it. Well, good morning. Last night, after I milled all the tongues on the plywood edges, I took the time to rough up the stock for the oak banding. Now I'm making the grooves. Come on down and I'll show you. The grooves that I'm set up to make are in the solid oak and slip over the tongues. This happens to be one of the draw fronts, giving a nice edge band. 
The groove itself is a little bit over a quarter of an inch wide, and it's a quarter of an inch deep. To make sure that the groove ends up perfectly centered in the stock, what I like to do is run one edge, turn it around, and then run the other. That guarantees that the groove is going to be right down the middle. These wider pieces of solid oak are for the face frame of the bookcase unit, and these thicker and wider pieces are for the frame around the top. Now the groove in these is not perfectly centered. So what I'm going to do is run all the pieces through once, giving me this groove. Then I'm going to make a slight adjustment to the rip fence until the groove fits snugly on the plywood. Now this is a very fine adjustment, about a 32nd of an inch. I'll run a test strip. That's good. Now I can run the rest of the pieces. Using my miter box, I can miter all the corners of the solid oak that surrounds the field of the top. I'll just dry fit all the pieces together and then glue it up. I'm not using any mechanical fasteners to hold these pieces on, just glue. Okay, now I'll just set this aside to dry. Let me show you how the back meets the top. There's a 3 8 inch rabbet in the solid oak piece that receives the plywood. Over here on the workbench, I have a top that I glued up when I made the prototype. I milled the rabbet along the back edge using my router with the 3 8 inch rabbiting bit. Now, I didn't want the rabbet to show through the end, so I stopped short of the miter. And now I just want to finish cleaning it up with a chisel. Well, now I'm ready to do a little assembly of the draw case. I've put glue in the lower dado, and in that goes a plywood bottom. And this is just fur because, after all, you're not going to see it. I'll clamp it and nail it. I'm using a four-penny finish nail, and by toenailing it from both sides of the shelf, you get an incredibly strong joint. Now we'll secure the other side. Now this groove in the solid oak of the ends of the top fits over the tongues at the top of the side panels. No fasteners here. Now we'll put the back on and secure it in place with some brads. These solid oak strips are next, and they cover the front edge of the plywood, really dressing it up. So far, both the door case and the drawer case are assembled the same way. There are a couple additional pieces. Both will get a toe kick board. Both will get a little cleat underneath the countertop. The drawer case, however, gets two additional pieces to separate the drawer cavities. All these pieces are joined to the sides with biscuits. Here on the side of the draw case, I've laid out for those rails that separate the draw cavities. It's always difficult to just hold a biscuit joiner on the line steady. So I find it helpful to just clamp a scrap of wood right on the line. Then the biscuit joiner has a place to sit. Using my biscuit joiner, I've made a modified biscuit slot. I've actually extended it so it comes through the edge of the piece. And what that's for is so that I can slip it over the biscuits that are in the case. I'd never be able to spread the sides far enough to pop it in. Now that I know it fits OK, I'm going to take it apart and glue it up. The toe kickboard is joined to the plywood with some biscuits. And I also made a modified slot 
both in the side and in the board so that I could just slip a biscuit up from the bottom. Drive that in and clamp it up. While the base unit's dry, let's build the bookcase. This is the bottom shelf that fits into the dado. I'm just using glue and nails to fasten it together. Here's the top of the bookcase. Now this plywood back is definitely going to show, so I'm using a nice piece of quarter inch oak veneer plywood. In order for these oak bands to fit properly, I need to remove a little bit of the tongue on the top shelf and on the lower shelf. What I really like about this tongue and groove system for the oak banding is that I get a very strong joint and no need for fasteners. But the system does involve a lot of clamps. For the last few minutes, I've been cutting the pieces of oak which go around the plywood blanks for the draw fronts. And it's done pretty much the same way I did the countertops. I find it easier with these draw fronts to glue up all three fronts in one session. That way I use fewer clamps. Let me show you the draw box. It's made from half inch cabinet grade plywood for the sides, the back, and the front. The bottom is a piece of quarter inch plywood. The sides are joined to the front with dovetail joints. Now over here I'm going to clamp one of the side pieces in my dovetail jig. I've adjusted the fingers for the dovetail layout that I want. Now using my router which is equipped with a collar and a dovetailing bit, I just follow the fingers of the jig and I'll get perfect dovetails every time. Now I just flip the fingers of my jig over and set it for the thickness of my stock. With a draw front mounted in the top of the jig, I'm now ready to cut the pins. Now when it comes to assembly, a little bit of glue and some gentle persuasion. That's good. The back piece slips into some dados that I cut at the table saw earlier. These little brads will hold it all together. The quarter inch plywood bottom slips into some grooves that I milled earlier. Now I'm just going to check it for square by measuring the diagonals. Okay, everything is fine. Now we'll just nail it along the back edge with some brads. And note that I'm not using glue here. That's how we make the draw boxes. The draw rides on tracks. This is the part of the track that goes on the draw bottom.
This is the corresponding track that gets fastened to the side of the drawer case. Here I'm drilling holes in the drawer front for the handle. I find it's easier to install the draw fronts with the draw boxes installed in the case. I just use a shim as a spacer, align the draw front side to side, and use some screws through the holes that I just drilled to attach it. Now I'll remove the draws and attach them from the inside permanently. I've just drilled a 35 millimeter flat bottom hole in one of my doors and that's to receive this European hinge which will be concealed. You'll note that the edge of the door has an oak band just like the draw fronts. With the corresponding half of the hinge attached to the side of the base unit I can now install the door. And that's just a matter of sliding it onto the hinge and tightening down the screw. You might have noticed that I've drilled a series of holes down the front edge of the cabinet and at the back edge. And that's for these clips that will ultimately support the shelves. Now there's any number of ways to drill the holes for those little clips. But this is a tip that I picked up from our friends at Woodsmith Magazine. Just take a piece of ordinary pegboard. It has holes that are uniformly spaced about an inch apart. I've set mine up so that I can drill holes either an inch and a half from the edge or two inches from the edge. But I made a couple more modifications. I took a force in a bit and made a slight recess at each hole so that my drilling device would fit into it. This is known as a VIX bit. This part, the silver part, is a centering device. The black part is the drill bit. After drilling the first hole, I put in a dowel, slip the jig on, and just continue up the line. Now if you have a long run of holes, all you have to do is reposition the dowel, drop the jig back on, and just continue. All three shelves are made exactly the same way. A piece of three quarter inch plywood and an oak edge. I've rabbited out a piece of one inch oak so that the shelf will just fit into it. Not only provides a decorative edge, but it adds a lot of strength to the shelf to keep it from sagging. All right. Now a couple hours of finished sanding. I'll dust it off and we'll move it into the finishing room. The challenge for the finish here is to end up with something that's so tough and durable that even a student couldn't destroy it. So what I've chosen is to start out with a coat of sanding sealer. After that's dry, I'll give it a light sanding and put on at least two coats of a tough gloss polyurethane. Well, I think these storage units turned out very well. And they can grow up with the child from grade school right through college.